teenager's worst nightmare. We all get it, and we've all tried our best to hide it. Sure, it can be embarrassing, but how do you get rid of it? Now, there are many ways to get rid of acne, and some ways are creams or even medicine that help you get rid of it. Or maybe you even popped it, even though you're not supposed to. Now, what comes to mind for most people are medicines or creams. How are these bacteria able to make acne disappear without causing harm to you? That's what I'm going to go find out. So, before we can talk about how bacteria heal acne, first we need to realize how acne is formed. So Maddie, how does acne form? The pilot sebaceous unit, or pore, is composed of the hair follicle, the sebaceous glands, and the hair. Sebum is an oily substance that moisturizes the hair and skin and is secreted from the sebaceous glands. If the pores function normally, the sebum moves out of sebaceous glands and up and out of the pore to moisturize the hair and surrounding skin. Acne is a condition of the pilosebaceous unit that can happen to everyone. During puberty, the sebaceous glands increase in size and produce increased levels of sebum due to the influence of hormones. So that's why teenagers get so many pimples? Yes, yeah, so around age 20, sebum production decreases and the sebaceous glands decrease in size. So that is why adults do not get acne. In the first stage of acne, known as microcomedone, the pore looks normal on the outside, but changes in the cell of the pore are occurring. The factors that contribute to the microcomedone include the shedding of corneocytes at the top of the pore rather than at the bottom, the accumulation of corneocytes at the top of the pore, and the increase in sebum production due to the blockage caused by the corneocytes. Normally, a small amount of propionibacteria bacteria is found inside the pore. Sebum, the nutrient, is the nutrient the bacteria consumes to grow. So if there are increased levels of sebum, there are increased levels of bacteria. At this stage of acne, the bacteria do not cause an infection because they are isolated inside the cell. Bacteria are not dangerous when they're inside the pore. How exactly does the pore become infected? As levels of sebum corneocytes and propionibacterium increase more pressure is put on the sides of the pore, causing it to bow out. When enough pressure is put on the pore, the sides will thin out and rupture. The result of this causes inflammation in the surrounding skin cells, which causes a red bump to form. So what's the difference between a red bump and say a whitehead? A whitehead or a pustule differs from a pimple because white blood cells are present in a pustule. The presence of a white blood cells forms pus which is the result from white blood cells combating the propionine bacterium acnes. So a whitehead is just white blood cells trying to clean up the mess? Yes, exactly. Acne is the buildup of sebum, corneocyte, and acne bacteria on the skin. The whitehead that forms is your body trying to get rid of the bacteria in the pimple. So next we need to look at how do these bacteria help get rid of acne. What exactly are these bacteria? These bacteria are a special class of bacteria that oxidize ammonia to nitrate. They're called ammonia oxidizing bacteria. So how exactly do these bacteria combat pimples? Well, let's take a closer look how these bacteria do their job. The skin has a microbiome consisting of millions of bacteria. Some are good, some are bad. That's really gross. Yes, in the past, particularly our sebaceous glands, were colonized with all these nitrosomas. These nitrosomas oxidize ammonia and produce a small amount of nitric oxide. 
Nitric oxide, is there any benefit to having that on our skin? Actually, yes. Nitric oxide has a number of useful functions on the skin, like regulating blood vessels and stimulating wound healing. In addition to those things, it can even inhibit or even wipe out certain types of microorganisms, including some types of bacteria. But unfortunately, these nitrosomas are no longer naturally occurring on our skin. nitrosomas naturally occurring in our skin anymore? Well, actually, these nitrosomas have been eradicated from our skin's microbiome through the use of soap and detergent. The skin is usually able to house these organisms because of their ideal pH and temperature. Today's humans are nitric oxide deprived because of the lack of nitrosomas on the skin. This gives us more of a risk for inflammation. So, we're getting more acne because we wash our faces more? Exactly. What we learned from Maddie is that acne is just the inflammation of our skin's pores. These ammonia oxidizing bacteria digest and consume the part of our sweat that causes inflammation. Nitric oxide is a signaling molecule. This means that it's highly reactive and can quickly penetrate membranes. This is especially important for the skin because it helps regulate inflammation by inhibiting cell adhesion, cytokine, and chemokine, all of which are primary factors for causing inflammation. So, in summary, the bacteria prevent acne from forming in the first place. This is through the production of nitric oxide, which kills the uh, acne-causing bacteria and has several other skin benefits. So the next time you find yourself looking for an anti-acne cream, try picking up a bottle of nitrosomas instead.